Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, we're going to talk, be talking about deck number 300, Arcade is the Strategist, which is a different kind of take on Doran. I actually like this guy a lot better than Doran. He is flying. He is vigilance. That right there is... And whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield, you draw, draw a card. So, gotta love generals that say draw a card. Trigger draw. And then each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So this is kind of Rolling Stones and the door in the, the Assault Formation all rolled up into one. Now, notice it just says creatures you control and creatures with Defender. So it doesn't turn everything into the butt fight that Assault Formation and Doran does. It's just, I think it's all formations modified too. Anyway, they're, they're not exact, but they're close parallels. You get what I'm saying. But anyway, three color decks. So first thing, let's look at some fixing. Of course, I have my artifact fixing. The Manolith, the Signet, Cluestone. I'm rolling through these pretty quick because y'all know what these do. Cultivate. Now here's where it gets interesting. Is this not perfect? Sunscape familiar. Your green blue spells to play cost one less. And it's a zero three. So it's good. Oh, it's so good. Overgrown battlement's gonna tap for a green for each creature with defender. And of course, your vine trellis is gonna tap for a green, your wall of roots. And more importantly, your Axeman Guardian, because Axeman Guardian is the real deal, because it's X mana, any number of colors. Wow. Now, uh, I got the creatures divided up into two categories walls and not walls. So let's go through not walls first. While we're in ramp ish mode, I mean, it, it's not exactly a ramp, it puts them into your hand. I really don't like that. I mean, but there again, would I pay another mana somewhere to put them into play? Eh, probably. Orator of Ojitai. Uh, when you're talking a flying flyer that's going to hit for four, that's not bad. Stalwart bear, uh, shield bears. This is going to, uh, I mean, this is like a champion for your team. It's going to give them all plus two. Trap root coming. Now, obviously, green is kind of where the deck is centered at. There's going to be more forest than anything else. Uh, still, it's three colors. It's not going to be a whole lot. But even if it's a zero, two, zero, three, that's still, you know, pretty good. And it has reach. Sentry. Well, the first strike. That's pretty neat. Drift of Phantasms, which we all know what this does, except now it's a flying five beater. So, you really got a Guardians of Miletus is a three mana six beater. Wow, look at that. The Vine. There again, puts it into your hand. Of course, we are running all the appropriate gates. We have the Gomazoa and the Guard Gomazoa. Wakestone Gargoyle. Now, everybody's favorite mythic. I mean, this has the potential to be really cool. Monastery Flock. Silica Guards. Now, Ludovic's test subject kind of doubles here. I mean, we don't have just a crazy amount of instants and sorceries. Or, oh, I'm thinking the other one. Yeah. Oh, the test subject here. Yeah, this is not the horror bounce thing. Oh, this is the 1313. Rawr. Yeah. Still, it's two mana. It works. Murmuring Phantasm. Uh, the this deck has a real real low converted mana cost. I think the tapped out said what two and a half or ish. Now 
let's look at our walls. And the reason why I want to look at the walls is because I'm running a copy of Rolling Stones in there as pretty much redundancy. Just kind of like I'm also running Assault Formation. Now, let's look at our walls. We got Glacial Wall. Three mana. Swinging for seven. Hey, Wall of Blossoms actually draws you a card when it comes in. So if your general's out, you're going to draw two. Same way with Wall of Omens. Now, Angelic Wall. I didn't realize the first printing of Angelic Wall was in Portal. That's pretty cool. Angelic Wall is the nuts for this. This is amazing. Jeskai Barricade. Uh, you can tell I'm rolling through these walls pretty quick because, let's face it, they're walls. I don't... Uh, uh, beat Link, maybe? <laughs> Wall of Glare. Can block any of creatures each combat. Wall of Resistance. And this one just keeps getting better. Wall of Tangle Cord. Now, this is way not bad. Two mana for six, and you can pay for reach. Now, Wall of Junk. This is this is what got me so excited. I love this one. Zero seven, two mana, and its drawback is draw a bunch of cards. No, seriously. Whenever it blocks, it returns to your hand. You cast it again, you draw another card. Whoa. It kind of almost... Puts a, a, a situation out there to where you're like, well, it is two mana for a seven power-ish beater. But do I want to swing with it? Or do I want to block with it? Yeah. Because odds are they're not swinging into this. Skygate. Flying steel wall. Now this is a boss at one mana. Only thing beats one mana is, of course, zero mana. Shield Sphere. We've been playing with this in combo decks for years. But now it's just kind of amazing. Hover Burial. Of course, Wall of Denial, which is was good before. But now, this is just... Arcades. Let's just say it maximizes the value of this wall here. Wall of Denial. Of course... Stepping back in the way, way back machine for the Wall of Ice. Gleaming Barrier. Wall of Mulch is nice. You can sack a wall, draw a card if somebody's wrathing your, away your walls. We have Crenellated Wall. That can tap to act as a giant growth ability. But my last wall I want to talk about. Let's talk about Necropolis. Yes, it's five mana for zero one, but you know what? Yes, it does obviously count as a wall, so that means it has defender. Now, zero colon. So there's no cost for this ability. So at any time, you can do this. Now, we don't have a whole lot of graveyard recursion here, because let's face it, if the walls die, we'll, we're just going to play more walls. That's the thing. We're drawing cards. And, but to get their casting costs in, yeah, we kind of have a low end, but for zero, after... This can get... It can both be, you know, probably the best card in the deck and the worst card in the deck at the same time, but... it. A lot of incidental board wipes happen. We may not be the cause of it. Somebody else at the table may be the cause of it. But you lose all your walls. Throw this guy down. He can become a beating really quickly. And it may be the best this particular card has ever been. <laughs> Okie dokie. Speaking of which. Not a wall. Doesn't have defender. But you know what? I believe I built the entire deck to where everything in here would not would be unblockable with Tetsuko on the table. That was kind of the idea. Because if you draw this guy, you're 
each creature you play is drawing you a card and it's dealing way more damage than it should and it's unblockable that's a uh, it's either going to end games or just make you a target which there again I guess will end games um, another way just Coco yeah it's uh it's going to get you your two creatures at instant speed. Now, I had thought about, uh, the, of, of course, the crazy expensive route, Alluren and, oh, what is that? I guess we could have done the Alluren recycle combo and just threw our deck on the table. But let's look at some pump up, some... Now, I'm running Overrun because that, that nice trample option. And the three doesn't really... I mean, it's three to the front and three to the back. Let's see if I can't clean this up before we get to the specific cards. One of the new ones is, of course, Aegis of the Heavens. Now, this is a giant growth that just don't stop. Plus seven. So this is a Might of Oaks with half the cost. We have Solidarity from way back. Just flat out, creatures you control get beasting. I mean, in this deck, that's what that is. Instant, and it's... I can see this closing out a player. And then, of course, we have Tower Defense. We get pretty much the same card for half the cost nowadays, and we throw an extra ability in there. Sure, why not? Still. Two mana for plus five and reach to your team. That that, that seems really good. So now, uh, what I got left is just a, a few uh, staples here. Of course, Counterspell, Mana Leak, Negate, Disenchant, Naturalize. And my last card is Slaughter the Strong. Because I, I wanted some kind of wipe or mass removal, but this way, any number of creatures that adds up to four or less, and then sack. So yeah, there's a good chance most of, of the rest of the tables only getting uh, one to two creatures. It's very conceivable that you could not touch your own board. Well, that is what I have got for Arcades. I had this one mostly built before the pre-release. Had uh, had a blast at, at went to two pre-releases yesterday. Uh, didn't do so hot at the first one. The second one had an amazing pull. There's a couple pictures of it floating around. Uh, two uh, full chromium, Vavictus, double wrath, tether. It, it was nuts. But got all the legends except for two blue and black. I thought I had the black one, but I guess I don't. But so we're gonna keep rolling through these core 19 decks and see what we got. I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. Right now it's time to shuffle and cut.